Hello, young artist. Today I'm gonna to show you how to not draw a tree. We draw trees a lot when we make landscapes. And here are some ways that a lot of young artists draw trees, and I've got some nicknames for them. This is the matchstick tree. It's really wide at the bottom and really tiny at the top. This, I call it the fish hook. It sort of shows the roots up out of the ground. And this is kind of a habit we get into drawing it like this. The top part of the tree is also really not wide enough at all. I call this the high five. Kind of looks like a hand and then it's sort of chopped off at the ends. Sometimes I call these Duke power trees, like when the electric company comes through and cuts all the trees so the branches don't get up into the power lines. The tree never looks very good after that happens. I call this the sharpened pencil tree. I don't know why, but I think when students start to try to draw all those branches, it gets overwhelming. And so they just bring them to a point to end it all. This one, I call it the V. And there is a V when the branches fork or split into smaller branches. But this right here just gets kind of confusing and you don't see the left side or the right side of the branch, you just see a bunch of V's. And then this one, I call it the grapevine. If you've ever had a bunch of grapes from the store and you eat all the grapes and you're left with all those little twigs, it looks kind of like that. The thing with a mature tree, a tree that's 10, 20, 30 years old, it's got long branches that have grown for many, many years and it doesn't branch or fork into all these little bitty branches so much. And also, this is a lot of work to draw it this way. I have a much easier way to show you how to draw a mature tree today. And I've got a piece of art that shows a couple of different trees that are full of leaves. So it's springtime or summertime or fall. This makes it look like it's fall. And this is a very dramatic old kind of tree that has a lot of curves. This one back here does too. You can see some of the curving branches. So I'm gonna push this one to the side and get out a sheet of paper. I've already sketched it in and I'm gonna go over my drawing with a Sharpie to make the whole process faster for you. And this is something I want you to try on a piece of paper or in your sketchbook. And I know that you can use observation to look outside at a tree that you see near where you live or where you are. I have trees in my backyard. My neighbors have trees, lots of trees that I can look at as I am drawing. I'm going to get my Sharpie. I have two ways I'm gonna draw a tree. I'm gonna draw one that has lots of leaves on it, like it's springtime or summertime or fall. And then I'm going to draw a tree that's winter. Now, these aren't evergreen trees, the kinds that have needles and keep them all year long, like, well, like, like we think of as a Christmas tree, a pine tree, a cedar tree. I'm not gonna draw that kind of tree. I'm going to draw a deciduous tree. That's a tree that loses its leaves in the winter. And that's when we can really see the structure of the tree, all those branches, limbs, even down to the little bitty twigs at the ends. So this tree, I'm gonna start with the trunk of the tree I want to make it about two fingers wide and I start by drawing parallel lines and then I might flare it out just a bit. I made a little bump right there. I've already made a little mistake. That's okay. When I get to the bottom, I could go straight across, but I don't. I curve it just a little bit and that helps. Let me move. Let me use this magnet here. This is an example that a student did a few years ago where the branches kind of run off the page. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to curve it just a little bit. And this creates the illusion that this is round. Of course, it's flat, it's not really round. But I wanna put a little curve right there. Then I start making the branches. But I wanna keep the middle part of the tree right here. It does not have to have symmetry. It doesn't have to balance exactly on the left side and the right. As a matter of fact, very few trees do that. I want to start a branch that comes out this way 
and I want to have two lines to show the left side and the right side of that branch. And then I want to continue up to show the main part of the tree. I want to have another branch here. Now I don't want it really short like this. I want to grow it out longer. And now here's where I make the V, but I only make one right here. So I want you to think about the branches are trying to get leaves and the leaves are trying to get sun. So the branches are not going to grow down toward the ground and the branches are not gonna fold up in toward the main trunk of the tree. The branches are gonna go up and out. Just like if we wake up and we stretch and do this in the morning, that's how the branches of a tree are going to grow. I'm going to let this branch grow a little more but then I'm going to make a V, only one right there, and then I'm gonna grow that branch out. I want you to notice the space. Here is the biggest space between the lines. Here the space is much smaller, and then here it's even smaller. I can make it so skinny or narrow that I really get down to just one line with my marker. I'm going to grow the middle of the tree a little more, and I'm going to put a V right there to split that branch. Another thing I want you to notice is that the branch never gets bigger toward the end. It only gets smaller. Those are the newest limbs, branches, and twigs, and they're gonna be skinny. In the springtime, a lot of plants grow a little more. Now right here, I'm gonna have another V. And I think right here, I made it a little wider. So how am I gonna fix that? I can either make it look like the branch splits again into two smaller branches, or I could come back here and make this a little thicker. So I'm going to go back and make it a little thicker. I think this part is too wide because this is skinnier. So if a tree grew that way, it would probably break. That branch would break right there. You can always color this in later. I've got another branch right here where it forks. So this is the widest. It gets thinner here or more narrow and more narrow here. And this one is even more narrow. And then I think I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna make any more branches. I want to add the foliage or the leaves. This could be really any color that you want. I'm not worried about color right now. I just want to make an organic shape. I want to show some overlapping. And I didn't mark it in with my marker, but I have a dotted line that kind of curves like an umbrella. And this shows the, it's called the habit of the tree. Is it a tree that's like an oval? Is it a tree that's round? Is it a tree that's kind of rectangular or square? Is it a tree where it kind of comes up to a point? All different kinds of trees grow in different habits. So I'm making this one very puffy and round like that. This one has a very wide habit. It's kind of like an oval. That's the habit of that tree. Even uh, smaller plants like bushes that we might have in our yard have a habit. I have a bunch of hydrangeas in my yard and they have a very big round habit. That's how they grow if I don't trim them. So I'm done with this tree. There's kind of an arc or a half circle or a semicircle in the habit of this tree. The branches are much wider than the trunk of the tree. Just like if you stretch your arms out, your arms are much wider than how wide your feet are when you put them together. On this side, I'm going to draw another tree and I'm going to show all the branches. I've already penciled it in, so I'm gonna draw it really fast. This flares out a little bit. This is the biggest part. I wanna make that curve. I wanna come up and have a branch right here, but I want to continue on making this the center part of the tree. 
I want to have a branch here. I continue on. I'm going to put a branch here. I want to start getting these branches that go to the left and the right. I want to get them away from the trunk of the tree. The tree wants to branch out and under it, under the ground, are the roots, of course, and the roots want to spread out too. Now, when I get really narrow like this, I might end up with just a single line, but I wanna fill that in. Like that. I can come back and color this in later. I've got just a single line right here. And when I get to a single line, I let my line curve a little bit. It makes that skinny twig, that new branch that's very young and thin. If I make a curvy line when I do that, it helps it look more natural. So I need to make another line here. And my lines are so close together that I don't have a white or empty space of the paper showing. I'm thinking about that arc or that curve as I draw my branches. I don't want one to stick way out and then one in here to be really short. It wouldn't really grow that way in nature. All these branches are trying to do their job of putting leaves out so the leaves can soak up the sun. That's how plants eat. They eat sunshine. It's called photosynthesis. And you learn about that in science class. Now right here, it's open. I haven't finished that. I need to close that up with a little V right there. But I'm not just making a bunch of Vs. I'm making the left side and the right side of the branch every time. I'm going to continue on here. I need to finish this. This takes practice. I've drawn trees like this hundreds of times. So you need to give yourself some time to practice. You may not do it very well the first time. That's okay, we are learning. And a challenge for you might be to just look at one plant that has different stems, like maybe a flower that has different stems or a, a bush, like maybe a rose bush. Now I'm tempted to go that way but remember the branch is probably not gonna grow back in toward the middle. It won't get sunshine that way. So I don't wanna go this way. I want to go out and I'm, I'm running off the page. Now this part here I didn't finish, so I've got to make a V right there and bring this branch out. And then this is open, so I need to close that with another line that goes in like that. I need to finish this little part right here and I'm going to be done. I need to bring that up like that and then I have one more little V right here and this is the left side of this branch so I want to come back and make the right side and I'm going to let that split. So I want to make sure I don't have any open spaces. I need to come back and close that in like that. You can always go back and add some texture. That's, that's a whole other thing. I really just want you to worry about drawing the left side and the right side of every branch. Try to put in about five to seven main branches. Like this one has one, two, really three main branches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven minor or smaller branches. And then all these twigs can be just a single line. I can add another one here. Single means just one. Like if you get a single scoop of ice cream, you're just getting one scoop. I don't wanna add branches in here. I wanna leave some open space because that's how the tree grows. I didn't finish that right there better go in and finish that space off right there. I think 
this is a single line and a single line would not support all these branches. So I need to go back and make this thicker like that. And then that is really not thick enough to support that, it would break. So I had better come back and make this a little thicker like that. You can always come back and make it a little wider or thicker. And you can always come back and color everything in. If you can't color it in, then maybe you have some open spaces that you need to think about. But if I needed to color this in, I think I've got it where I can color it all in. So I want you to find a tree to observe, draw what you see, look at the structure of the tree, and try to draw it as realistically as you can and put it in your sketchbook. I'll look at it later with you Come back for a Google Meet and we'll practice again next week and I'll see you later, young artists.